of James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the Long Rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. to learn you not to give me no lip when I give you fair warning. When he gets on his pins, tell him next time I come around here and you haven't cleared out of this trading post, I won't be asking so nice. Next time I'll be keeping a musket handy. Yeah, shivered at my boots. Now remember, I've warned you before. You're trespassers. Stay and I'll put torch to this place and burn you out. Yes, we'd better move on. Quite early for spring cleaning, Jim. Me and Chingachgook brought you our furs. Hello, Hawkeye. Well, you've been using that face for wildcat bait? A uh, two-fisted one, Hawkeye. Six fists, you mean. Sounds like one of those octopuses. In human form. Grasping everything around us, forcing us to leave. My brothers say white man have law. Protect life and home. What law? Crescent? He's the law now. This whole territory belongs to him. Well, I always thought this was free country. Not according to Cressing's royal grant. Me and some of the settlers hereabouts learned that the hard way. A few months ago, Cressing and his bullies moved in, claimed ownership to everything, and the sole right to trade. But we figured what we built up was ours. Well, I'd say what you figured was right. Tell it to them that had their barns and their cabins burned down over their heads by Cressing's men. In the last few weeks, not a one of them dares set foot inside this trading post. We tried to go it alone, but me and Priscilla just couldn't do it. You wouldn't be alone if you had a couple of partners. A man would have to be out of his mind throwing in with me. Well, then I reckon I'm out of mine. <laughs> Sometimes Hawkeye say same about me. Well, now that we're partners, why don't you get this place in order and me and Chingachgook will go out and drum up some trade. Good work. Put down them pelts. We figured they were for sale. You're not one of Cressing's men? No, we're buying for Jim Austin. <laughs> These pelts ain't for sale. You saying that because you really don't want to sell them? Because you're afraid. Stranger, maybe Jim Austin ain't warned you. But it's powerful unhealthy for you even think of doing business hereabouts. Fear make heart of settler like water. Yeah. Well, if we're going to be a success in the trading post business, appears like we need some legal advice. That's something the sheriff ought to know more about than us. Ah, that Jim Austin, he always was one for telling stories. Sure, there's been a fire or two. Maybe somebody falling down and breaking an arm. There ain't been a single complaint of violence come across this here desk since Mr. Crescent took over. Him not let Austin stay in trading post. Well, it's not the way I hear it. Austin's a bad businessman, going broke. Going broke shouldn't mark up a man's face with cuts and bruises. Now, look at here. I'm a busy man. Whatever Austin told you, don't change the fact that Mr. Cressing's got a royal grant signed and sealed by King Charles of England. Water tight and absolutely legal. I'm beholden to you, Sheriff, for making everything so clear. If I ever have any more questions about the law, I'll know right where to come. That uh, King Charles, wasn't he the king who went to the chopping block for denying the rights of free men? with fur 
if not go very far. Maybe we'd better have a try at him again. Sometimes a tavern makes a man a mite friendlier. Hawkeye. Oh, <laughs> a ridiculous alias, I would say, Sheriff. Not if you've heard what I've heard, Mr. Cressing. Ah, uh, mull drink. Soothing to the nerves. Here's one perspective. You bumpkins would do well to cultivate a taste for this. It's always magical in erasing worries about rumored reputations. Sir, this here woodsman and that Mohican don't look like they can be erased that easy. They ask a heap of questions about your charter, like they don't figure it was legal. I'm sure that we have the means of impressing on them that it is. You, uh, you agree, of course, don't you, Varney? <laughs> for a halfpenny drink. Other settlers stay long time. Not buy anything. They probably haven't got any money. Maybe Sheriff is right. We waste our time. Settlers not listen to us. You know, a man who'd maybe slam his door in your face would be more polite if he was your guest in a tavern. It'd be my pleasure, friends, to invite you to have a cup of cheer. Look, stranger, we don't want no trouble. And drinking with you is sure to bring us plenty. Maybe so ungrateful, Hanks. It's a rare treat to have so generous a guest in my tavern. Right cozy place you got here. It would be even cozier if you and your Indian friend headed right out of this place and kept on going. You sound like you not only own this tavern, but the whole town as well. Lock, stock, and trading post. I reckon that leaves the air is the only thing that's free around here. I figure on breathing all of that I want. Oh, it is a pity. But I'm afraid you'll find the air here very bad for your health. I ain't as patient as Mr. Cressing, Hawkeye. Get. I guess you're waiting for my back to be turned before your patience runs out. It ain't turned now. Popping out, let you give your clumsy friend a hand. He's cluttering up the tavern. You make clutter too. Now go! Redskin, you and Hawkeye have the upper hand now. But if you're in my town tomorrow, I warn you, you will not live to see the day after. Go! Guess I'll have that cup of cheer with you now. How about the rest of you? White man, drink together in friendship. 
stand together with loyalty, be able to fight together against all bad men like Cressing. The Mohicans right. An easy thing to say, Hanks. But when these two leave, who protects my wife and children? You, Mather? You, Hanks? But if you don't stick together, Cressing will break you one by one. I guess I've been lily-livered long enough. If I can count on you to protect me from Cressing and Varney, I'll sell you my pelts. All I got saved in my cabin. I give you my word. Have my price? Same as Jim Austin always pays. Come to my cabin in an hour and I'll have them ready for you. Good. I'll just give us time to tell Jim he's back in business. See you in an hour. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, but it breaks the ice. First Hanks, then the others. Hey, partners. <laughs> when first Graham lead, rest of flock follow. Well, reckon I better find my way to Hanks' cabin. I think you'd better stay here and keep an eye on things, just in case Cressing decides to pay a visit. <laughs> he act like great gentlemen, but we give him warm welcome. in my territory, Hawkeye. And when a man is caught red-handed with murder, justice is quick and hanging even faster. All right, take him out. You claim the right to a trial, Hawkeye. I agree. Court is in session. How do you plead? Well, under your false charter, you're not only the hangman, you're judge and jury, too. I take it, then, you plead guilty? Didn't you decide that when you had Hanks killed? You ain't been very respectful. What are we wasting our time for? We've got plenty of rope. In a couple of minutes, that troublemaking tongue of his will be quiet. Patience, Varney, patience. A hanging should be a stately occasion. Market day is less than 48 hours from now. Hawkeye can not only provide entertainment, but also a fine lesson to our beloved settlers. Well, now, that's mighty fitting, Cressing. Seeing as how I intended to pay higher prices than you. <laughs> Very amusing, Hawkeye. Your sense of humor should give me an added chuckle when you dance to the hangman's tune. Meanwhile, he'll be your guest, Sheriff. Sheriff, uh, you're not exactly my idea of a genial host, so don't be offended if I don't accept your hospitality. You try anything, you'll be so full of lead, it'll take ten men to carry your coffin. But come on. Arnie, spread the word. I don't want any of the settlers staying at home this market day. An important man like Hawkeye deserves a large audience. Me not like. Blood brother gone too long. Maybe he's just trying to drum up more business for us. But he say he only go to Cabin of Hanks. How far is Cabin? First clearing just north of the settlement. You lock door. Keep gun ready. Not let anybody in. I go on trail of Blood Brother. Must be mighty close to sound so loud. Two men stand guard on front door. I wondered what kept you. Two men. No. Give me your flint and steel. Give me a chance to get things started. 
Safety I'm concerned for. Hanks has been murdered. Pressing had me all set to hang for it on what he calls market day. The day after tomorrow. All the settlers come in and sell whatever they got. Pressing and his men load them up with drinks and then cheat them at cards and dice. In that case, I'll have a little game of my own for them. My brother not take chance till I bring back red coated colonel. Now, the last place Cressing will look for me will be right under his nose. He'd figure a fugitive from justice like me would be long gone and far away. He might come and find you. By that time, I hope to have the settlers convinced they should stand up against him. Tell the colonel to get here as fast as he can. Me hope my brother know what he'd do. Yeah, if I don't, I still might be the main attraction on market day. Dangling from a tree. Now get going. <laughs> Impress the settlers of my position. Sort of like a royal scepter. Precisely. The first settlers will be arriving at the tavern within an hour. Let's make sure they start tapping the barrels. I'm free. I wouldn't be able to stop. Later in the day, I plan to drop in on Jim Austin. This time, I'm certain he'll follow my advice. Ain't another man in town with spine enough to come to this meeting, Hawkeye. Make it fast before Crescent gets wind of it. If you had your choice, who would you rather do business with? Jim Austin or Crescent? Hmm. Hanks made his choice. A quick funeral. You've all got more than just a suspicion of who made the arrangements. Yet you do nothing about it. Most of you came out here to find freedom. Make a better life for yourselves and your families. You can have it, too, if you just band together and... Fight for it. Band together. That's easy for you to say. You're a woodsman. You can free as the wind, go whenever you want. But we've got to stay here and do what Cressing and Varney and the rest of them tell us to do. He doesn't bother you much, does he? Not so long as your heads are bowed and your knees are bent. We've listened to you long enough, Hawkeye. Cressing's charter makes him a law hereabouts. The one choice we've got is to do as he says or lose the homes that we've broken our backs to build. Supposing I can convince you that Cressing's charter isn't worth the paper it's printed on. He's just playing on your fear of losing what you own. Well, well. So this is where everybody is. Two birds with one stone. A fugitive from murder. And my best customers all gathered together to do business in my new trading post. I don't recall me or my partner giving you a bill of sale. Perhaps you remember, you are a fugitive condemned to die for murder. Here's the gallows fruit you lost. Just a minute, Cressing. Just a minute. Get out of the way. You can't take a man out and hang him unless you give him a fair trial. He's already had a trial. I don't remember any of these citizens on the jury. Neither do I. Under my charter, juries are not required. Sort of makes your charter bigger than King George, the House of Parliament. The rights of free men everywhere. And I'm beginning to agree with Hawkeye. You all know what's in my charter. We grant to the family Cressing full and absolute right to that land, its inhabitants, the fish in the streams, the rivers, the lakes. It's signed by a king whose signature was outlawed more than a hundred years ago. You lie. Enough of this. Take the prisoner out and hang him. Nobody's hanging anybody without a trial. Ingram, you have just three seconds to step away. Oh, you heard, Mr. Cressing. 
As I step aside, I join Hanks in the cemetery. I'm within my rights if I order my men to open fire. By the time they'd reload, those of us left standing had sent them to kingdom come. Very well. If you settlers step away, I will grant Hawkeye a trial right here and now. First, we must select a judge and jury. And there will be none better suited than my choice. A blade, a fine tip of steel! Your deafness pleases me, Hawkeye. You prolong the enjoyment of this sport. Use gun. You have got a chance, Indian. There's three guns to one. Slight miscalculation, sir. My men are placed at all windows and doors. All right, drop your guns. Which is Mr. Cressing? Let me introduce you to him, Colonel. In the name of His Majesty the King, George, not Charles, I arrest you for the fraudulent use of a spurious charter and for the murder of a settler named Matthew Hanks. Yes, is a comfort. We'll save you the trouble of a trial, Colonel. Come on, men. Hold on. Regardless of what they've done, they've got just as much right to a fair trial as you or me. You can't start a new free life with mob rule. All right, men, take them out. We scare up many customers. Whew, what a change. We ain't had a let up all day. I hate to come out here for a breath of air. Hey, now look at you two are my partners. You gotta come in and help me with this crowd. Well, we don't exactly hanker to crowds. Too nerve-wracking. <laughs> More peaceful wrestle grizzly bear in forest. Oh. Besides, too many partners spoil a trading post. What was this? You want me to buy you out? Me and Chingachgook are already bought out. We got paid enough when those settlers remember they were free men in a free country and stood up to Cressing. You better get back in there and help out your wife. So long, Jim. Goodbye, Hawkeye. Okay. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. <laughs>